In all my years of experience in cybersecurity, one of the most important skill sets to have in this industry is your investigative skills. In my opinion, this is one of the things that can easily separate you from being an okay analyst to a great analyst. But you might be wondering, how do I get good at my investigative skills? How do I master this so I can level up and get that sweet money? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. So if you're new here, my name is Jono and I work in cybersecurity as a stock analyst. Now for this video to make sense, let's start with an example. Let's say you wake up to a fine, beautiful morning, sleeping your coffee when all of a sudden you get a message from someone saying they had an unauthorized login. Your first reaction could be, oh that person probably forgot that they logged into something. But here's the thing, every suspicious or unauthorized login should be treated seriously. Because all it takes is just one compromise and it's GG's. So what do you do in this case? Where do you even start? The best way to think about these type of investigations is to kind of put yourself in the person's shoes. So essentially, they're telling you that they didn't log in. So your first step should be to verify if they actually did log in, which means you need to dive into the login logs. But there are also different type of login logs like your actual device logins and those single sign-ons on Microsoft. What I usually think about is, which is the higher likelihood of being compromised? Is it the computer or the Microsoft login? A company computer might have a whole bunch of security softwares like EDR solution, web security, privilege management, and so on. So the likelihood of a compromise is less on a device level which means you should be looking into the Microsoft logins first because all it takes is just a password and I'm afraid to get in. Now we're looking at the Microsoft login logs, what do we actually need to look for? Most companies will have a SIEM solution like Splunk and this allows us to view different fields for an event. I've done a video here on the basics of how to read logs like this so feel free to check it out if this doesn't make sense to you. Alright, so in the login logs, the first thing I will look at is the source location. Why, you ask? If a user is based in Australia for example, there's no reason for them to be logging in from Jamaica or any overseas location at all. Let's say we actually do find a source location from overseas. We need to check what kind of connection this is. An easy way to check is to run this source IP address against threat intel feeds like virus total or abuse IPDB. These are the type of tools that our security operations team rely on to filter out false positives. In this case, it looks like the source IP address has a number of positive malicious hits. At this point in your investigation, it should raise some major alarm bells. Essentially, we've confirmed that the unauthorized login was actually a true positive and we verified that the source of that connection was actually from a threat actor. We need to immediately contain the threat. So the next step is to block the IP address, reset the user's account, and revoke all active sessions. None of the threat from the patient zero has been contained. We need to investigate the extent of the threat, or how we like to call it, the blast radius. We need to figure out how this user's account was compromised in the first place, and then figure out if anyone else was also compromised. In cybersecurity, the most common way a company gets breached is not because of some weakness or a loophole in the security system, it's almost always human error, and that's most likely through phishing emails. So that means we need to search the person's email traffic for any traces of that IP address. Let's say we do find an email with the same bad IP address that was sent to the person, we need to break this phishing email down to different pieces and do some forensics. The main goal of this is to figure out what the person actually did to get their account compromised. And for us to do the forensics, we need to use something called a sandbox. A sandbox in cybersecurity is basically a secure, isolated virtual environment used to safely execute and analyze any potential malicious files without affecting any of the main environment. And a good sandbox solution that I always use is Anyrun, which is the sponsor of this video. Today's sponsor, Anyrun, takes sandbox into a whole new level. It's an interactive malware analysis platform designed to let you observe live malware behavior right from your browser. Unlike traditional sandboxes that run in the background and spit out a report, Anyrun is fully interactive. You can manually interact with the environment, move mouse, click pop-ups, open documents, type into forms, just like an actual user. And that's crucial because most modern malware doesn't reveal itself unless it detects human interaction. It waits for a click, a keystroke, or a system response before executing. Anyrun lets you watch the entire behavior unfold in real time. You'll see what files are created, what processes are launched, what registry keys are touched and where the malware tries to connect. You can even inspect memory dumps, network packets, drop files and more on the fly. It's trusted by 15,000 security operation centers, DFIR and incident response teams worldwide because it's fast, intuitive and incredibly thorough. You can share sandbox analysis and reports with colleagues, embed results in the reports and even compare behaviors across different malware families. It also has a hands-free mode that automates user actions needed to detonate multi-stage attacks and ensure early detections of evasive threats. It integrates easily with other security products like SOAR platforms via API and SDK, making it an effective solution for fast, reliable triage, reducing analyst workload and improving 
hunting detection rates. Whether you're hunting threats, investigating a fishing payload, or just trying to understand how a file behaves, any run gives you insights, not just alerts. Use the link in the description to learn more and explore how this platform can supercharge your threat analysis workflow. Okay, so back to the investigation. So it looks like the president received a phishing email, clicked on the bad link, and that took him to a fake Microsoft login page. They put in their login details on that phishing website and compromised their account. With a sandbox, we can easily extract all the indicators of compromise, like the website links, any other related bad IP addresses, and add them to the block list. And as part of our email investigation, we also need to check other email recipients and do the same source login location checks. So there is a chance that the threat actor might have used a compromise account and created some mailbox rules to send out more phishing emails to other people internally. That means we also need to check for any outbound emails from suspicious source IP addresses from those users as well. They could be the same bad IP addresses or they could be some other VPN IP addresses. The main thing here is to check if there is any attempt to spread this attack internally. So in this case, it seems like there were no suspicious outbound emails from these people and that's great. Now we've completed the important step of investigating the blast radius and containing the attack, we need to move on to the next step which is to figure out what we've potentially lost. We need to understand if there was any data exfiltration. This stage is also very important as part of the investigation so we can understand the scope of the damage. If all the threat actor took was some redundant files then there's not much to worry about. But if they took stuff like PRI data or worse, some confidential files, then upper management needs to know this so they can prepare some damage control from their side. Most organizations would use Microsoft OneDrive or SharePoint as their main file sharing or file management solution. So we need to grab the list of users that we've identified previously and run a search on all their activities on their OneDrive and SharePoint. We're basically filtering out for any matches for those bad IP addresses or any suspicious source login locations. Let's say we've identified a list of files and folders that were touched by the third actor. We'll need to assess the impact of those files. So the impact analysis on those files could be as simple as the type of data that it contains like PRI data or financial data, stuff like that. By getting this information, we'll be able to adjust the severity of the incident as we go along. All right, so we've done the initial investigation, we've found the root cause, and we've done the impact analysis. We need to do one more final step, which is the prevention. This stage is all about preventing this incident from happening again. The best way to tackle this stage is to go back to your findings and relate back to your investigation steps. So for example, if we missed out on this unauthorized login, we need to ask ourselves why that happened. Is it because we're not monitoring unexpected login locations? Or is it because we're not checking for the source IP addresses and their reputations? The main point of this stage is to enhance our existing security monitoring by setting up more alerts to cover these gaps that we have. Once we've done up all these new alerts, we also need to test them out to see if they actually catch all these unauthorized logins. All right, so that was quite a lot of information to run through, but if you felt like that was pretty straightforward and you were able to follow everything, then you definitely have to investigate the skills to be a great analyst. But if you felt like that was a bit too much, then that's also fine. This is all a journey and it'll take some time for you to understand and get the hang of knowing what to do and where to look. Anyway, that's it from me in this video. Hope you guys learned a thing or two. Thanks for watching.